Hello and welcome to this presentation about the Year 9 Options process. I'm Mark Sorovich. I joined Farringdon Community College as Deputy Head Teacher this January with responsibility for curriculum. This video gives an overview of the options process for Year 9 students, parents and carers, including some of the key dates and timelines that you'll need to stick to um, and a chance for me to address some frequently asked questions it should be watched and listened to in conjunction with the options booklet, which is now available on our website. And there's a link to that in the letter, which I have sent to parents and carers just recently. So this is a really important time for year nine students because it's the first opportunity that they will get to make some real choices around the subjects that they study. There are, however, a range of compulsory subjects which all students will continue with and they're shown on the slide just here, maths, English literature and language, science, all three sciences will con be continued to be studied by all students, RE and core PE. For most students, there will be four other subjects that they can choose. Though there is an option that you can make around science and RE that you study, and I will start by explaining that on the next slide. So all of our students will continue with Science and RE at FCC. The default option, if you don't choose separate science and full course RE, is that you will do combined science and short course RE. Three lessons in each of the science subjects, biology, chemistry and physics, and the result is a combined science double GCSE taken at the end of year 11. Short course RE is two lessons a fortnight, just in year 10, with an exam taken at the end of year 10, and that's worth half a GCSE in RE. If you're someone who really likes science and wants to cover it in more depth, possibly pursuing a scientific career in the future, you may want to consider separate science and full course RE as one of your options. If you do this, you will have more science in RE, four lessons in each of the three separate sciences, and in year 10, four lessons in RE. This results in three science GCSEs and a full GCSE in RE taken at the end of year 10. So a frequently asked question we have is, why does my child have to study RE? It takes up an option and they'd rather do something else. Now, understandably, this is a common question that some students and parents ask. The answer is, it's compulsory for schools to teach RE, and at FCC, we really value this subject. With an externally examined subject, students take it much more seriously, and it results in a valid, robust GCSE with all the preparation that that requires, and the practice that that gives our students in year 10 is really, really important. Furthermore, removing RE from the curriculum would not actually allow enough time for a student to study another option anyway. So it really doesn't use up one of the four options. In fact, it would not give anywhere near enough time because the optional subjects for a full GCSE require five or six subjects across the full two years of years 10 and 11. And RE is only studied in year 10. So which subjects can our students choose from? You can see from the list above here that we have a wide range of courses available for our students at Farringdon. These are mostly GCSE subjects, but also a range of vocational subjects, which are much more coursework based and less focused on exams. Having said that they're less focused on exams, there is a real high level of coursework and deadlines and so on involved in some of those vocational subjects. Students are able to choose four subjects or three if they're doing uh, se uh, separate sciences and RE. They should consider carefully the EBAC subjects, the English Baccalaureate, and I will talk more about that on a subsequent slide. Those subjects have a star next to them on this table here. Students should consider practical subjects. Are they best placed to be choosing practical subjects, perhaps a mix between practical and exam-based subjects? Um, and what subjects are students strongest in? Where are they performing well at the moment? Which ones do they really, really enjoy? Or which ones do they think that they might enjoy in the future? And crucially, 
what future plans do students have? What are they thinking about doing after year 11 and after sixth form or college or whatever they go on to do? There are a couple of things which students are advised not to consider. One of them is what courses are my friends doing? Well, you may not end up in the same classes as your friends and actually friendships change and shift. So it's really important to consider what you enjoy and what you're strongest in and what your future plans are. Also, which teachers you have? Well, there's no guarantee that you'll have a certain teacher. Um, and so you need to think really about which subjects you uh, need to choose that are best for you personally. For some students supported by the SEN department, it may be appropriate to study uh, fewer subjects um, and have additional time um, with the SEN department but any such students will be contacted individually by our SEN department and they should still make a full set of choices on the options form. For most subjects, there is open choice around which subjects and combinations students can study. However, there are a few restrictions shown on this slide. The reason for this is because these courses have similar content and it's really important that our students study a broad range in their curriculum choices. You don't need to remember this because this features in the options booklet and it's also very clear on the options form. So a frequently asked question is what is the EBAC or English Baccalaureate all about? The EBAC is a set of subjects at GCSE that's well regarded and keeps young people's options open for further study and future careers. There's no specific certificate or qualification for the EBAC in itself. However, you attain the English Baccalaureate if you get good passes in English Language and Literature GCSE, Maths GCSE, the Sciences, and that can include combined science, it doesn't have to be triple, um, Geography or History, and a Modern Foreign Language. The government has an aim that as many pupils as possible study this combination of subjects. We recommend that our students do pick at least one of history or geography and a modern foreign language, although we do leave that choice to them and their parents or carers. This combination of subjects is particularly important if you're considering um, a future in academic studies, possibly at A level or um, moving on to university as well. Some universities and some employers may regard the EBAC as being a particularly important qualification. Another frequently asked question is around vocational or technical qualifications. So these qualifications are alternatives to GCSE but are seen as equivalent to GCSE in value and they include BTECs, Cambridge Nationals or level one or, one or two certificates. The assessment of these um, courses is based much more on coursework and ongoing assessment, although they all contain some form of external assessment or exam. They are very much suitable for some of our young people, and it's advised that you think really carefully about your choices, especially those subjects where there's more than one route, such as PC, uh, PE, which has GCSE or Sport BTEC, and Music, which has GCSE and a BTEC route as well. Please do speak to your teachers there is sometimes a perception that vocational technical qualifications are easier than GCSEs, and that is not necessarily the case. They tend to hinge on lots of coursework and some really, really tight deadlines for that coursework. And so you need to think really carefully if, um, about whether those subjects are for you. So what happens next? Well, the first important thing is that you attend the options evening and the date of that will be on a subsequent slide. Once you've attended the options evening, you've thought really carefully, you've spoken to parents, carers, teachers, other people about what options that you should take, you need to submit your option choices on a Google form. So here's what the Google form looks like. It will be sent out immediately after options evening. It's really important that you meet the deadlines shown and again, the deadline for completing the options form is shown on this slide. But 
It's also important to note that there is not a race to get your option form completed. I will not be looking at the option forms until after the deadline. And so it's really important that you take some time and consider carefully what you want to do. There is also a year nine parents evening come up, coming up. And again, the date of that will be on um, a subsequent slide. There's a little bit more information here about completing the options forms. They will be sent to students' email um, accounts and students will need to be logged into their Google accounts in order to fill in the forms. There is a place next to each option choice where I've asked to give some reasons for making that choice. It's really useful to have those reasons because if courses are oversubscribed or there's any sort of issue with uh, allocating your options, I can really look closely at the reasons behind making those choices. There's also a requirement for students to make two reserve choices and then there's a space for them to comment on what those reserve choices are and why they've made them. For example, it might be that you pop in there, I'd be really happy to do one of my reserve choices and that will help me once I'm putting together the option blocks and allocating choices later on if courses are oversubscribed or if there are any issues around allocating the right options. So what happens next? Well, on this slide here, you can see some of the key dates coming up. The options evening will take place in the Wilson building. Um, please do attend that if you can. That's a chance for you, uh, for students, parents, carers, to get some guidance and ask subject leaders some really key questions about those courses. The options form will be sent out online to students after the options evening. But again, as I've said, please don't rush to fill that in. You need to consider that carefully. There is a parents evening coming up, an online parents evening where you'll have a chance to ask um, subject teachers for those subjects that students already study, how things are going and for some guidance on the options process. Um, the deadline for the options forms is there on the screen. And then after that, there'll be some follow up discussions with students. So if there are issues around the option choices that students have been made, um, for, or for example, we can't run certain groups because of numbers or whatever, we will, as far as possible, be in touch with students and parents to discuss that. Before the end of the year, um, the year 10 options will be allocated and then in September, students will commence studying those option subjects. And I will write to parents uh, and confirm with students in term six um, about their option allocations. So another frequently asked question, will we get all the subjects that we put down on the form? The majority of students in all likelihood will get their chosen subjects. There are some students, however, who may not get all of the subjects that they put down on the form, and that's for a number of reasons. Sometimes it's not possible to fit together the combination of subjects that students might have opted for. Some um, combinations of subjects just don't work on the timetable occasionally. A subject you've chosen may be oversubscribed. There may be too many students wanting to do that subject. In that situation, um, pupils putting the subject as their, their first or second choice will be prioritised ahead of those putting the subject as their third or fourth choice. Again, that's why it's really important that you put your choices on the form in priority order. That will be clear on the form when you see it. In some circumstances, we may feel that students have not made the most appropriate option choices. And obviously, in those circumstances, we will talk to students and parents to, um, to, to, to rearrange things. And it may be that the subject you've chosen does not have a viable group. If only a very small number of students want to do a subject, it may not be viable for us to run that subject. And again, in that case, we will let students and parents know if we're having to, um, if, we're, if we're not able to run a subject. I hope the presentation has been useful. Thank you for listening and watching. If you do require any more information, there's lots of it in the options booklet. So please look at that. And also please come along to the options evening where you can ask us any questions that you might have. Thank you.